Hi, it's Tracy from Glitter Thumbs, and welcome back to class. Today's class is Cricut Explore Step-by-Step, -step, Step 5, Creating Your Own SVG Using Inkscape. Now, Inkscape may seem a little bit overwhelming when you first use it, but honestly, there are only a couple of buttons that you really will need to use. Just ignore the rest for now. You can learn it later. So let's begin. Inkscape is a program that is free to download and use, so you don't need to worry about purchasing this program. It may seem, like I said, a little bit overwhelming, but ultimately all you need to do is open up your project on the top left-hand side. Most of the time for beginners, I would recommend finding a coloring page that you really enjoy. And in this case, I picked a coloring page of Spirit the horse, and uh, my daughter loves horses, so why not go for it? Go ahead and click on OK. And from there, your coloring image is going to show up on the screen. Let's go ahead and maximize it. From there, all the Inkscape sees is a flat picture. You want to create different types of layers and spaces in there. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so I can see it a little bit better. And from there, I'm going to select the entire image. By selecting it, all I have to do is click on the image, and you'll see little arrows coming around at the outside of it. And from there, I want to go to Path. Now, Path is a great tab up on top that you're going to use a lot, so pay attention to that part. And you want to trace the bitmap. What it does is it creates all those lines in Inkscape so that you can actually color inside of it. Now, the adjustment as far as the brightness and so on, you might have to adjust accordingly. I will range, honestly, depending on the picture, between 45 and up to 90. But you can always update it and push OK. And what it will do is create its own little copy. And the copy is what you want to work with. Now, I can see Spirit pretty well on the side. So I think that that's actually the perfect brightness. Now, I could have changed it upper or lower, you know, adjusted it up to 90 or so on. Now, if you click on this image, you can see if you click on path and break apart and nothing happens to it, then that means you're clicking on the wrong image. That's perfect. See how it changed colors? That means that that is the actual traced image. Now, breaking apart pretty much cuts this up into little sections so that you can uh, color it in different ways. And you'll see that in a minute. So path, break apart. From there, I'm going to draw a, a square over the top of that image on the lower left. I don't want that to cut out. So all I have to do is create a square around it. It will select the image, and I can right-click and delete. So our horse is now ready actually to color. So what I'm going to do is click on a random section of the horse and it will highlight, in this case, part of his body. I'm ready to click here and look what happens. Just part of his body. If you look at the imaginary box around it, you can see that it's going to be, in this case, going to be the body. And if I guessed wrong, I could change the color. But look how that brown in the horse automatically fills in with the black marks. You're going to notice that this is little sections that whenever they're separated by the black line, it will create a separate cut for it. So when I click on the parts of the horse that I think need to be a certain color, I'm going to color it however color I want. Now, I'm going to go to the tail, which is a darker brown. And you'll notice that only a section of the tail is highlighted. That means that it's being separated by another black line in the, in the picture. And we can fix that. But if you didn't fix it, what that would mean is that it would cut out in your design space or whatever program you're using it would mean that it would cut out two sections for the tail. Now, in this case with the mane, you'll also see that it's creating different sections for the mane as well. Now, for the face, you can see I'm going to a lighter color. So all it is is pretty much filling in the blanks. Now, if it gets too small for me to realize what I'm really highlighting, I will be using that magnifying glass to figure that all out. But look at the leg. That leg in the far side in the front is actually two different sections or two different cuts. And I'll show you how to fix that in a little bit. There's his hair. 
we're going to highlight that. And if you notice, the eye is going to be a little bit more difficult. Let's go ahead and, since we can't quite get to that, I don't know if I'm going to go to the eye or the feet next. So let's go ahead and take a look here. We're still working on that name, which is several different layers and different cuts of brown. But we're going to combine those images in a second, and I'll show you how to do that. And that's a part of his body. So that's an individual tiny little light colored cut. And he looks pretty good now. I need to work on a few things now. I'm going to zoom in on his face so I can see his ear and his eyes. Now, right now, the computer is thinking not only does it have a black background, but the ear is a separate black cut. So we need to fix that. First of all, we need to go into that mane and turn that a dark color. And we're going to go into that ear and we're going to change the ear color as well. But oh, I'm going to the eye. So the eye, you're going to have to guess for a few minutes here. I'm thinking that's a small circle. So it's the white of his eye. And yep, it is. And I'm going to see if I can maybe highlight another section. Not the white of his eye. There we go. It's a little bit bigger. I have a feeling, there you go. There's the white of his eye. Now on the coloring page, it did, give me the, it did not give me the opportunity to do the black part. So we'll just keep the eye black. Now the nose doesn't need to be filled in. It's black. So I can actually take that color out. Oh, we're going to work on the ear next. Like I said, this is me going back and looking at this video, so I apologize if I misspeak a little bit. All right, so we still need a little bit with the ear as well. We've got the pink for the inside. And the outside of the ear is going to be that dark, uh, the, the tan color as well. So like I said, all it is is clicking on the body part and coloring it in. Every time you fill in those colors, though, you can see that ear, that round outside, for the tan, it needs to be a, a separate cut. The reason why I bring this up over and over is because you need to realize that unless you merge some of these images together, there are going to be many small pieces that eventually need to be cut out. The nose itself and the mouth are black. We don't need to change the color there, but at the same time, the computer or the Inkscape program thinks that it needs to cut out a separate nose collar. Now, a way for us to get around it and figure out how to fix this black is to go in and select some things. So number one, the hooves. I don't need black hooves on top of a black outline. So I'm going to take these hooves and get rid of them. Get them out of the way. Ultimately, the black outline will fill it in, and it's an unnecessary cut. So the purpose of this class is not only to help you creating your own SVGs, but also for you to think long term as far as importing this into a cutting machine and um, how, how much time it's going to take you to cut the images out. So these hoops have been set aside and I created a square around them and I deleted them by right clicking them. So here is the black layer that automatically was created with Inkscape. I'm going to move it aside because there are some black spots in the horse that you won't need because they're just going to show through the black layer. So part of this is going to be what's called excluding the image. What that means is that there are some lines in there that is going to be cut out of the tan. So right now the computer thinks that that black line in the shoulder and the rear area is going to be cut separately and layered on top of the body. We don't want that. So I'm going to pull down my shift button. I'm going to click on the shoulder and the rump and then the entire body. And I'm going to click path exclusion. Right now, you can see that I'm moving this around separately to show you that that is a separate image. I want the Inkscape to exclude it, to cut it out of the body. So I'm going to highlight the body and the line path exclusion that will tell the machine or the program that the rump area needs to be excluded or cut out of the tan now i'm going to do the same thing with the legs i'm going to hold down my shift button 
I'm going to click on the lines on the legs and then click on the entire body. Click on Path Exclusion. It will cut out those lines now. Now we're going to do the same for the mouth and the nose because right now the computer thinks that it needs to cut those out. And actually in this case, all I have to do is right click it and delete it and you can see that it's not in the um, in the background. So let's take a look at that. The nose in this case will have to be excluded because we're cutting it out of the face. Another way for you to figure out whether or not it can be deleted or excluded is if you grab the image and pull it off of the face or off of the, the main screen, if it shows white in the background, then you're good to go. But since I push path exclusion, then it will cut that little nose off. Now the same with the eyes. There's a black line around the eyes. If I were to just delete it, the eye wouldn't look right. I want it to be cut out still of the face. So I'm going to highlight the eye, I'm going to highlight the face, and I'm going to put path exclusion. I need to look a little bit closer to this, so I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to use my select tool on the upper left. That just means I want to grab it. That's all that that little arrow means. I'm going to click on the black the best I can. I move that eye out of the way so that we know that that's still going to be there and I can fix that later. That's not a problem. Now I can click on it, click on the face. Oh, there's a little eye too. That part don't really care about. So I can either delete it or cut it. Path, exclude. So those little marks right there are actually part of his eyes, the blue part. So if I choose to, I can change the color of those to a blue or whatever color I want. They're going to be really small eye pieces, depending on how, how big this cut eventually is going to be. But right now, that might be a good idea to help with my template. So I'm going to go ahead and change them to a blue. And I'm going to just get rid of a couple of things. That one I'm going to delete. And you can see it just disappears from the image. It doesn't cut a line through. This will eventually go back down, but I can't see exactly where it needs to be because of the white background. So I'm going to drag back the black and, and, and fix it that way, but eventually, not now. Let me go ahead and zoom back out so I can see the horse in its entirety. And I'm gonna move this black shadow back behind the horse. I need to click on the arrow so I can move it around. I'm gonna line it up the best I can. Now you're gonna start seeing those layers come together, so that's really nice to be able to see that. Now I'm going to zoom back in so I can place the eyes. Click on the hour or the magnifying glass and we're going to zoom in until we can reach to that eye. We're going to click back to the select button on the upper left and we're going to move that white part of the eye back into place. And now we don't want to forget the whites of his eye. So the beautiful little spark sparkle. Sometimes people leave that part out and then they'll go in and maybe um, add a little bit of glitter or something to it to create that fun little uh, brighten their eye or lighten the eye, but it's fine for now. So there's my horse. He's looking good so far, but there's a new thing that we need to learn now. And it's all about union, union. So we'll talk about that in a minute too. Now if you look down at the bottom, the nose is still a little off. It's cutting out a separate uh, tan part. Where I don't know if in this video I addressed that, but you can just leave that aside and it'll be a cutout section. 
Now the body itself is actually divided up because there's a line from the neck to the joining part in its torso. So we're gonna talk about that too. We're gonna to try and get the body to be all one cut piece. Do you see how there's one piece here? And the leg is not involved in it as well. So the head is not one piece. Uh, the head is a piece, but the whole body itself has been cut up into little pieces. Now, normally people will create these inkscape pictures and not really think about the process of putting these pieces together. And the simpler you can make it to put together, the more likely you're going to do it. Because if you're going to put this much effort into creating your own SVG, why not make it so that it's easy to put together? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go down to the pen tool. It is right below the pencil and right above the calligraphy pen. I'm going to zoom in first and I'm going to find a spot where it's cut. In this case, it's the neck. I'm going to use my pen and I need to create a box. Now the box needs to be joined all the way around, but I want to follow the line in the hair go down on one side of the line, go up, and then go back to the starting place. The reason why is I'm creating an extra blotch of color or a block of color that's going to be merged in from the neck to the body. So I have this little square that I made a zigzag. I'm gonna hold down my shift button and, and click on that X on the left. That means that there's no outside line. Then I'm going to fill it with the matching tan collar. So whatever it is on each side, I now have matched it. So from there, you're going to go and select with your button, the arrow. You're going to click on the head, holding down the shift button. You're gonna click on the body and you're gonna click on your new little section that you created. From there, you're going to click Path Union. And guess what? The body and the head are now together. You created a bridge to combine those two images together. So now I only have one cut piece instead of two. I'm gonna do the same thing with several of the other areas. So Path, so far, has been the only button or tab that we've really used. The hair needs to be, let me fix this real quick and create that hair. That's another little black or dark brown section. I don't want so many pieces in my hair. So because this is separate, I'm going to create a bridge and union or unionize. <laughs> I don't know what the word is there, but I'm going to create a little, a little bridge so that the two pieces of hair are combined. So I'm going to zoom in to where I want to create that little bridge. And in this case, we're gonna go down to the pen again. I'm gonna start on one side. Let me zoom in a little bit more so I can see it better. There we go. So there's a section that's cut into two. I'm going to grab my, I'm just moving this just a little better. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my pen and I'm going to create a box around that cut image. So start on one side, go across to the other, go down, go across and back up. It automatically has a black outline. Get rid of that outline by cl clicking on the shift button and the X. Now you need to fill it with the appropriate color, in this case, the dark brown. Zoom out so you can see it. Click on the select button, which is that arrow on the top left. You're going to hold down your shift button and grab the left side, the right side, and the middle where your bridge is. Click on path, union. 
I'm going to do this a couple more times so you can see why and how I do this because ultimately you've gone into there it is all together, which is great. Less work for me. And, uh, you know, the more re repetition you have with doing these, the easier it's going to be. So that's why we keep talking about path union, path break apart, path union. So we already did path exclusion, which means cutting out an image out of a larger, um, kind of tracing it out. We talked about path uh, exclusion. Sorry. We talked about, path, let's start over here. Path exclusion means cutting out an image. So just like the lines in, in the horse's body, path union is combining things and break apart is what we did at the very beginning to cut apart that image. So we're back on this one. I'm gonna delete it because I don't need it anymore as a reference for colors. And I'm going to zoom back in so I can start working a little bit more on this horse. Uh, you know what, in this case, what I did is I went ahead and I'm saving it because I'm happy with it. Now, when you decide to save an image, it automatically saves to an SVG. So I'm going to rename it, put it to, uh, you know, horse, spirit, rearing, whatever I want to put in there. It will save to an SVG and this image will be able to be put into your cutting software as long as it asks for a vector graphic or an SVG. Now, I went ahead after this video and fixed a few things with his tail did that whole thing again, union, 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 and made it into less pieces. So just to give you a heads up, I did work on this horse a little bit more. And the horse is also available if you want to download it on uh, www.glitterthumbs.com. It's asking if I want to save the changes I made. No, I don't because I already worked with the horse and I saved it already. And from there, we're going to go into design space. Now design space, all I need to do is click on upload an image and you wanna to go to vector. You just created a vector. So what we're going to do from there is browse for the saved file that you created with Inkscape, which is right there in my case. I'm going to open it and I'm going to rename it. In this case, something like spirit horse rearing or spirit the horse or horse spirit and create a couple tags so that in the future when I want to look for this uh, specific image, all I have to do is create little search keywords and it'll be a lot easier for me to find him. Push upload the image and guess what? Spirit is right there ready for me. So I can open him up from there and he will show up unlike uploading an image basically or a basic image in Design Space. This one's already put together. It already has its little layers. You can see a couple little sections in there that I can recolor if I want to. I can change the hair color um, according to each section, each cutout. So just like uploading or editing your own image in Design Space, we can do the same thing here with our image. From there, I can click on Go and cut him out according to whatever size I want to. So the rest of this you should be able to do on your own. We have basically covered the um, ideas of what to do with creating these inkscapes, and hopefully you can play a little bit with it. The only thing I will say is remember to start off with a coloring page first and practice, practice, practice. Remember that you will be cutting this out in design space. So the more layers that you can union, uh, create a union between the two of them, the less cuts you're going to need. And uh, like I said, practice. Thanks for joining me. And uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. Or you can visit my website at www.glitterthumbs.com. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.